Okay, so we are starting with uh, the um, sort of recap from uh, glycolysis. And uh, it is the process by means of which one molecule of glucose, the energy bonds, basically the CH bonds of one molecule of glucose, which is a six carbon containing compound are tapped through the input of two ATP molecules. Tapping by tapping means I'm making glucose, which is unreactive into a relatively reactive compound, which reactive. is fructose phosphate and fructose bisphosphate. By the way, it is not biphosphate, it is bisphosphate, right? And then okay. in doing so, I end up with two molecules of triose phosphate, which are each of which contains a three carbon. And then after that, uh, it gives me two ATP molecules and also two hydrogens. I donate those hydrogens. I actually not even donate. I dump them into NAD. So NAD is ready to carry them along the way. In doing so, the NAD will now be converted to reduced NAD because uh, addition of hydrogen is reduction, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and removal of hydrogen is oxidation. Okay, and then again, after making a lot of intermediates, I get two ATP molecules more, and then I end up with two molecules of pyruvate, right? So this was the summary. Achha. Now, since you were asking about this, what is uh, NAD and all, so we need to know a little bit about uh, the structure NAD, and that comes under the topic of cofactors and coenzymes. So I'll be teaching you a bit about it. Okay. So let's start. Basically, enzymes, they need some, uh, they require some additional non-protein substances known as cofactors. Okay. And the, there are three main kinds of cofactors. They can be coenzymes themselves, inorganic ions and prosthetic groups. Now, the only thing which you know from amongst these three is that of prosthetic group. Where have you studied prosthetic group in AS? Do you remember? Uh, iron prosthetic group is in the hemoglobin. Yes, right? So hemoglobin has the prosthetic group and the achha, and prosthetic group is actually a non-protein component of hemoglobin that enables it to bind to oxygen and uh, to carry oxygen. And every prosthetic group has an iron atom, right? So, yeah. Huh. So, ab hum kya kar rahe? we are actually doing this topic, which is cofactors. And we are saying that there are three cofactors. They help karte in many reactions inorganic ions, coenzymes, and prosthetic groups. As far as this chapter is concerned, we are more concerned about coenzymes. Why? Because NAD, NAD jo hai na, which became reduced NAD, is actually structurally. A coenzyme, coenzyme. Okay. Coenzyme se naam se pata chal ki ye kisi enzyme ko uh, ke co work karega, right? It's a co work of an enzyme. It means it's going to help some enzyme. So let's see which enzyme it is helping. Now, I am more concerned about this right now. I'm not going to go into the details. Ye sab main padha rahi. I'm bothered about this because we are doing NAD. So structurally, NAD is a coenzyme. Why do we call it co? Because it is loosely associated to an enzyme, loose molecular association here with an enzyme. Consa enzyme, as far as cellular respiration is concerned, the name of the enzyme is dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase. You know why dehydrogenase? Let's go and check why am I saying dehydrogenase. When we were doing this, we saw that two hydrogen so, atoms of hydrogen. were... Haan, removal of hydrogen. Yes, removal of hydrogen. So, this means that it has been mentioned here, but it can't be removed without dehydrogenase. Okay? And the helper of dehydrogenase is what? NAD. Why? Because what hydrogen dehydrogenase will remove, it will accept NAD. Usko accept kar so that is that is why we say that NAD is a coenzyme. Take it. Achha. Let's go. Let's move forward. This is about it. NAD's role as the coenzyme is to accept the hydrogen atoms from the active site of the hydrogenase enzyme. It is the most important hydrogen carrier in bio, biochemical systems. If there was no NAD, though, there would have been no cellular respiration. 
right? Is this clear? Yeah, right. Clear. ठीक है अच्छा और आगे चलते हैं थोड़ा सा यू नो यू नीड टू स्टडी द नो द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एनएडी आता है ये एग्जाम्स में सो लेट्स स्टडी द स्ट्रक्चर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स सी कि व्हाट डज इट स्टैंड फॉर सो इट स्टैंड्स फॉर ये आपको पूरा नाम पता होना चाहिए निकोटीनामाइड एडनिन डाई न्यूक्लियोटाइड ठीक है ओके नाम से ही पता चल रहा है कि यू नो दिस इज वन कंपोनेंट एडनिन भी है इसके अंदर बेस और डाई न्यूक्लियोटाइड भी है सो You can easily see that in the structure. I'm zooming into the structure. ये देखो. Nicotine amide. So nicotine amide ये रा. Adenine is this one. Di nucleotide का मतलब two nucleotides. तो ये two nucleotides है ना? Phosphorus, phosphate group, sugar. ठीक है? और जो है वो base कौन सा है? हाँ base तो adenine है. फिर उसके बाद ये भी एक है. ठीक है, so this is also a nucleotide, this is also a nucleotide, so that's why we say that इसका पूरा नाम क्या है? Nicotine amide adenine di nucleotide, ठीक है? जो इसका nicotine amide वाला part है ना वो ये है, it's this part and adenine वाला part ये है। अच्छा, hydrogen who carries hydrogen? This part carries hydrogen. That's why it's written over here. Hydrogen is carried here. Is this clear? Yeah. Clear. Let's move on. The nicotine amide base is the functional hydrogen carrying part of the molecule. So, yes, का सबसे important part है because यही तो वो part है जिसे अपना function करता है NAD. क्या function करता है? It accepts hydrogens, right? अच्छा. How many hydrogens does it uh, does it accept? The pairs of hydrogen atoms removed by the hydrogenase enzymes during respiration. जैसे वो accept करता है, it is very natural for them. To dissociate into two protons and two electrons. Okay. ठीक है? हाँ. अब होता क्या है कि the NAD molecule by default is electron deficient. Electron deficient है. And so it carries hydrogen atoms as separate protons and electrons. Each molecule of NAD carries one protons and two electrons in effect. चलो. बस इतना जानना काफी है. Let's just ignore all this. इतना काफी है कि NAD is a coenzyme for the enzyme dehydrogenase. Structurally, it looks like this. The most important part of NAD is the nicotinamide part. That's the functional group because that's the place where hydrogen atoms are accepted. NAD by default a electron deficient molecule है इसलिए जब वो कैरी करता है हाइड्रोजन एटम्स तो उसको कैरी करता है कैसे एस सेपरेट पोर्ट प्रोटॉन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स जैसे जैसे ही वो एक्सेप्ट करेगा ना एस सुन एस इट एक्सेप्ट दिस टू हाइड्रोजन एटम्स और वो जाएंगे एनडी के अंदर तो वो फॉरेन स्प्लिट हो जाएंगे इनटू टू प्रोटॉन्स एंड टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स राइट सही है राइट � NAD in the oxidized form, meaning it has not yet accepted the hydrogen atoms. वो accept करता है two hydrogen atoms, ठीक है? और जैसे ही accept करता है, वो NADH बन जाता है, या फिर हम उसको कह सकते हैं reduced NAD बन जाता है, ठीक है? और यही equation जो आपको नहीं समझ आ रही थी ना कल, now this equation will make sense. क्या था glycolysis में ऐसे करके arrow बना हुआ था, right? And ऐसे show हो रहा था ना? टू एन ए डी और फिर लिखा हुआ था टू रिड्यूस्ड एन ए डी वाई बिकॉज एच प्लस बी रिमूव हो रहा था यहाँ पे एक दूसरा एरो बना हुआ था टू एच तो टू एच जब जाएंगे एन ए डी के अंदर दे विल चेंज एन ए डी फॉर एन ऑक्सीडाइज स्टेट टू रिड्यूस्ड और ऐसे ही होता है अच्छा ना वॉट इज द वे टू राइट डाउन दिस इक्वेशन इसके बहुत सारे तरीके हैं लेकिन आजकल जो ये अपडेटेड बुक आई है उसमें यू नो इतनी डिटेल में हम जाते नहीं हैं सो द बेस्ट वे टू राइट इज एंड द बेस्ट एंड द सिंपलेस्ट वे टू राइट इज लाइक दिस ऐसे भी आप लिख सकते हो जो नजर आ रहा है आपको NAD प्लस टू हाइड्रोजन एटम्स इज इक्वल टू NADH2 या फिर आप ऐसे भी लिख सकते हो NAD 
plus 2H is equal to reduced NAD slash NADH. Up now, instead of confusing you, I am going to share this slide with you. Go through it. Read this carefully. What do you understand? Yeah. Now see, I'm going to... Okay, I'll clarify this for you. Now see, these three kinds of equations, what I've written over here, are all acceptable by the examiner. They show that you know the correct concept. Here the examiner might think you have a lot of detail. Aati hai. Here he might think you want to do simple karna hai usko, hai? or maybe like this. All three are acceptable. And this actually also means that if you write this in the form of statement, likhoge, if a student is writing NAD accepts hydrogen atoms, correct? NAD accepts protons, correct? Because it is one thing. NAD accepts electrons, bhi correct? That's why the two hydrogen atoms in the previous equation were made easily. What do they become? The two hydrogen atoms can very quickly split into protons and electrons. Split ho jate. This is very natural to happen. So if a student yeah. is writing that NAD is accepting electrons, wo bhi sahi hai. and if you're writing NAD is an electron carrier, it's a proton carrier, that's also correct. What is wrong is if you write that NAD is a carrier of a molecule of H, ya fir NAD carries H2, so that's wrong. That's a technical error that you've done. This means that you don't know what the molecular level is going on. Do you understand that? Right? Yeah. Any questions? No. No? Okay. Um, if I ask you to tell me the comparison between these two molecules, compare the structure and basically compare means differences and as well as similarities. So what will you say? ATP. ATP has um, three phosphate groups. NAD has two. Um, okay. ATP has, is has sugar and NAD also has sugar. So like, are they both ribose Correct. sugars? Yes. Um, and then how many marks is this three? Um, then I would potentially talk about... Yeah, both nucleotides say you, they both say it was in respiration. Find the represent molecular structure. So NAD, uh, Carries H uh, like uh, not carries electrons, protons, and electrons. NAD um, carries protons and electrons. ATP doesn't carry proton and electron. NAD has yeah. nicotinamide. Nicotinamide. Whereas uh, the uh, it doesn't have nicotinamide. Because the nicotinamide yeah. portion tha na, right? Yeah. Achha, and NAD is a dinucleotide, whereas ATP is not a dinucleotide. Yeah. ATP to ATP ye sara jo hai, it's one nucleotide. Whereas NAD may this is a nucleotide and this is a nucleotide. So you may kya gya, dinucleotide. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Right, let's look yeah, at the I answer. I think this answer but any hai any. Ah, hai. Okay. So look at the answers quickly to see uh, whether you were correct Both or not. Ribose sugars, so yeah. Um both ATP has three phosphate, NAD has two phosphates. NAD has nicotinamide. Um, ATP has one ribose sugar, NAD has two. Both have adenine base. So, yeah. Right? Achha. Let's do this question also. State hmm. two examples of anabolic reactions in mammals that require ATP as energy source. Protein synthesis. Correct. Um, and uh, I don't know the other, wait, now that require it. Proteins and this I don't know the other ones. Okay, let's see. Look at this, lipid synthesis, Protein synthesis, disaccharide synthesis, where when you want to bring a maltose and a maltose together to make, a, sorry, a, um, a glucose and a glucose mo molecule together to make maltose. You want to uh, combine glucose and fructose to make sucrose. And you want to combine glucose and galactose to make lactose. So all condensation reactions, all of them, 
in which you are joining amino acids to become proteins, you are joining glycerol and fatty acids to become lipids. They are all anabolic reactions that require energy from ATP. Right? Okay. So here, yeah. okay. and uh, outline the roles of NAD in the, sorry, you can't do this because we haven't reached that place. Yes, this is a good question. Okay, so I'll just hold my screen like this so that you can see the entire question. And now tell me what will be the answer to A part one, two, and three. Take some time and tell me the answer. Two ATP spent, that's four, that's two net total, and then mm. two reduced. No, this, is, this makes sense. Mm. And two sometimes it is known as a. In many uh, textbooks, you know, they ask you to make a balanced sheet of uh, cellular respiration. So from amongst all the different steps of cellular respiration, I would say that this is the balanced sheet for glycolysis. It's a balanced sheet. accounts wale. Yeah. Right? So it's a balanced sheet. Okay. Um, same thing which I said, and I would strongly advise you to go through this. It's an important point. It's polar. It's large. There are no transport proteins available. Could possibly possible to buy a phosphorylated glucose easier to split if its activation energy is increased. This will enable the glucose molecule to be contained within the cell cytoplasm because the phosphorylated glucose cannot cross the phospholipid bilayer. The glucose is polar, it's large, there are no transfer molecules available for it to pass with it. Oh, so it's basically containing it, right? And then it is just mm. easier to split because its activation is increased. So, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm. Uh... I've just finished glycolysis, uh, done uh, many questions on glycolysis, so I'm ending my meeting and then I'll restart with it, right? Okay.